Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today I am going to show you how to change the bushings on these things. Um, on the Chicago Electric specifically, but it's the same process as the lower tone. You may have seen in a previous video where I did this process with the lower tone and where I did this with the Chicago Electric. But today I'm actually going to give you the rundown and show you how that's done uh, step by step. Uh, one of the ways you know you need the bushings replaced on these things um, is usually one of the barrels will off, they'll start a little bit of off track a little bit. They'll start to wobble in there. Um, you know, kind of give a weird little offset. And I don't know if you can see it, but even if I pull this down this way, that barrel will stall out every once in a while. And if you get that happening where one barrel isn't moving in line with the other, there's definitely an issue with the bushings. And I'm also I'm getting a belt squeal that I haven't had before. Um, yeah, I could try to replace the belt, but honestly, I know the bushings are getting old, so that's probably the source of the issue. And meanwhile, the lower tone that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, I replaced the bushings in that, is running like a champ. Um, no issues, no problems, smooth as butter. So time to get these things going like that, and I will show you exactly what it takes to change the bushings in one of these. Okay, so the first thing to do when modifying these Chicago electrics <laughs> is, uh, obviously, like anything, unplug it. <laughs> you may have seen my previous, uh, I think it was a Friday's Rock episode, where I uh, tore one of these apart just kind of quickly. I didn't really talk my way through it. Um, so I'm gonna, this one I actually want to. So this time... I am going to try to talk my way through it. First thing to do uh, is get all these covers off, of course. Um, oh, and make sure you're wearing all your proper safety equipment. Uh, okay. With well, that being said, on to the real stuff. Real stuff, not the fluff. Alright, so it's obviously a mess in there. Um, this is still, I believe, the original belt that came with it. Certainly has enough black on it to say that it is. <laughs> they do wear over time, but it's still looking pretty good. Um, certainly no reason to toss it out yet. I usually don't toss them until they actually break. Uh, I'm sorry if I bump the camera as we go. It's directly in front of my chest, so as I lean in to get leverage on things, I bump it. All right, you'll definitely want both off because you want access to that motor from both sides, top and bottom. Um, yeah, okay, so next thing I want to do is you want to mark where the motor is sitting, or uh, this plate, uh, these, with the, well, I guess even with the lower tone, they have, the plate can move, so you want to mark, you want to mark the position of the plate, and then you want to mark the position of the screws in relation to that plate, and then for me, well, I mean, the, you got this spacing here to tell you the top from bottom. It won't line up if you get it upside down. So, uh, next trick is probably get that pull, big pulley off, maybe. Uh, quick little note, when you're working with these hard, uh, yeah, these Chicago electrics, it, w it wasn't a thing with the lower tone, the 33B. When you do the lower tone, it's pretty much the same as this. There's just a few minor differences, but uh, if you know how to do, if you've seen this video you'll know how to do a lower tone 33b but with these chicago electrics these screws are pretty cheap um they're not uh, hardened steel by any means so you want to make sure your screw is se your screwdriver is seated in there really tight otherwise you'll strip them out not a really big deal um for this little project because this is about the only screw that's really going to give you any trouble possibly oh man look at all that stuff kicked on there but, yeah, this is the only screw that's really going to give you any trouble, but uh, when you, if you have to actually tear the motor apart and try to replace the cylinder, that turns into quite the, uh, quite the ordeal. I, I stripped one of those screws out at one time. And I ended up, um, I was trying to save the motor, and uh, ended up it wasn't savable. Uh, I wasn't able to salvage it. So, um, next thing is to get this motor out. Um, 
obviously it's wired in so you got to be careful as you're moving it around uh, one thing to note is on the bottom side um, you have the spacer in here and you have this piece holding it on and on the bottom side you have the ground wire so you'll have to uh, yeah, be aware of that as you put it back together. Make sure you get that ground wire back on there. It's not floating around. And you want to catch that little washer, I guess it is, or a nut <laughs> is what it's actually used for. Like, make sure that doesn't go. Pull that out. And then when you put it back together, the screws go inside those center holes. So, and that is important. So just, uh, Make sure you set it aside in a way that you like to do on your workbench, in a way that makes sense to you. So that was the bottom. Here's the top. Same process for the top. Oh, it's hung up on the... <laughs> Let's thread it into the... There we are. Okay, there it came loose. Got the plate of course came loose the spacer and the other problem i found with these chicago electrics is these little spaces are cheap and they're plastic and if the motor gets too hot it'll melt and it'll go this way and it'll loosen the belt change the belt size and change the angle of the way the belt pulls and motor pulls and it's ugh, pain in the rear all right so just don't put your don't put it in a hot location you should be all right uh Right, so the motor's free. Next is to, uh, you wanna start taking the bearings apart. Easiest thing to do, oops, sorry about that one. Let's get it in here. Again, be careful with the screws, you don't know, strip them. And don't throw them all over the place. black in there from lubricant and everything else and a little bit of metal dust or uh, plastic dust from the bushings and then you'll with the uh, Lortone 33B they have e-clips that you can just pry off but these ones require I oh, all of a sudden I can't remember what these are called this type of snap snap ring haha <laughs> that there's the word you won't And it really helps to have this these types of pliers for a snap ring. I had uh, originally had the idea when I was working or thinking of doing this project of getting some E-rings of the proper size but uh, to put back on, but uh, I just uh, didn't do it. So I didn't look up the price, and I was afraid of, uh, honestly, the quantity. I was afraid I was going to have to order. Oh, come on. I was going to have to order like a hundred of them. And they go flying everywhere. One snap ring. And, oops, bushing's loose. And it's squirrely. Alright, hold on. Uh, with the other one, I don't know if you saw that video or not, but uh, the resting bushings were pretty much intact. There wasn't anything really wrong with those, so um, I would kind of say that if you're doing this in the future, uh, pulling these apart in the future, um, you know, if you run like these, the bushings or the bearings that you're putting on, if these fail, it would probably be uh, the drive pulley would be the issue. Now, those would be the ones I'd replace. Uh, but at the price of these, and since you're already in it, and it only takes a couple more seconds, may as well replace the other ones too. I know my friend Kelly, um, uh, he has his own little YouTube channel too, with fun little shorts on there. He, uh, he says that, uh, you know, that's why he bought a Thumler, you know, so he doesn't have to do this. And uh, I, I don't disagree with him, but I got to looking at the prices on the Thumler, and for their dual barrel um, 
rotary tumbler. It's uh, 200 and some dollars. And since I got this one for 70 bucks, and what, seven, or it would be 70 if I had paid full price. Um, yeah, 70 bucks. Uh, I paid $10 for the book, replacement bushings. And uh, yeah, so if you have the money, yeah, definitely go with the Thumlers. It's a higher quality machine for sure. And uh, But if you don't, then you have a little elbow grease, a little DIY in there. Go with the Chicago Electric. Okay, so the back. Well, you can see it's a little worn. It's not awful. Um, with the other one, the bushings were, uh, there was a hole worn right in the side here. Like you can kind of see where it was starting to wear through here. So it wouldn't have been along with this one, and there would have been a hole in there. But uh, So, good thing to get to it now, just uh, while we're at it. Okay, that's that side. Now the other side. Bushing came right on on that one. There. Uno. Dos. Okay. And then there is a washer. That's probably a spacer. <laughs> um, I forgot to put that back on on the other one, the other unit. And there was a lot of play when it got back together. There was a lot of play in this shaft, and I think that was probably what that was for. Uh, again, you can see a little wear here on the bushing. Uh, slightly ovulated, but not bad. Well, this one wasn't all that bad for being... Well, this is a newer unit, too. It's about a month newer than the other unit that I just tore apart. So, there should be less wear. About a month less wear. Uh, yeah. This is the resting pulley, so I expected that bushing to be good, and it is. So that one didn't need to be replaced, but honestly, I get tired of lubricating these things every five frickin' minutes. It gets old, so, I mean, just to not do that, this is worth it. The resting pulley, however, or the resting shaft, was the one that gave me trouble last time. Uh, when I first ordered these, uh... I got 10 of them and they came in a bag like this and then I reordered, I went back and as soon as I realized I didn't have enough for the next, to do all my bushing, I went back and uh, ordered again from the exact same spite, the exact same manufacturer, exact same thing and they, this time they showed up in a little fancy plastic sleeve so I'm going to use the ones from the fancy plastic sleeve this time. And I'll take out the four. I'll just make sure they all come in the same batch. That way. Alright. One, two, three, four. And those will go in my bin of spare parts for the Chicago Electric. Yada yada. Okay. Oh. So next trick is to obviously uh, use a step drill. To I'm use a step drill to cut into the widen the holes. Oops, don't grab the shaft while I'm holding them. And I've gone to the five six five eighths hole. I think I've started to cut into the eleven sixteenths and stopped. So up to the eleven sixteenths, I think the five eighths you really got to push the bushing to get in there. But if you go to the eleven sixteenths, it's going to fit in there a little bit loose. So depends on how tight you want it. Also, when you run these step drills, at least for me, with this, slow wins the race. I think I burned out my dad's step bit on one side because I spun the bit too fast. But that was a rookie mistake. Okay, so something my dad and I learned when we first did this don't uh, put these bushings or bearings in yet. Uh, they can snap in. You can friction fit them in there. And that's all well and good. Uh, i got to clean that up a little bit. But, um, yeah, don't put those in yet because you're going to need that space. Probably took just enough metal off. Yep, 
there we are. Okay. So yeah, if you if you get it really tight and you really have to press the bit or the uh, bearing to get it in there, then just make sure you uh, don't yet. I just lubricated these this morning, so that might be the. This one, these ones, I'll try to, for the sake of filming, turn it this way. Make sure the motor is out of the way so I don't run the bit into that. things with a file real quick all right well now with the whole board out the next step is to actually start putting the whole thing back together so uh, let's make sure this last time I had a heck of a time with the resting shaft no nope, it slips right on there this time I don't know if it's because I have different bearings or because uh, the resting shaft is a higher shaft and make sure when you put these on that the flange goes towards the outside and this part goes into the middle when the when, just like it was oriented when you took the bushings off when the bushings were on you know the wide part or the I'm sorry the narrow part the non flange side was towards the barrels where the barrels would rest so make sure you're doing the same thing here And also start on the motor side. Uh, that was a little tip my dad and I learned. The last time we put those uh, bushings in, we friction fit them and we really pressed them in there only to find out we had to take them back off to uh, make them work. All right, there we are. I guess that wasn't such a big thing right now because I'm gonna have to pop it back out anyway to get that. Uh, Get that snap ring on. Drill out of the way. Snap ring. That plier. That was useful. All right, and then make sure, of course, that you have the flat part of the shaft of the uh, driven pulley or the driven shaft towards the motor and the bushing goes on or the bearing at this point bearing goes on and then the spacer and then the snap ring <laughs> let's go the right direction all right I did. Okay. So now with that together, thank you guys for your oop, holding up the bird motor. Thank you guys for your service. Flip this end around again. That's good. Try to get this on frame for you so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, get the uh, bearing in there. Grab yet another snap ring. And it's in the groove, which is good. Not much play in there. Uh, it'd be a lot simpler without a camera in my chest, but <laughs> then I wouldn't be able to help other people with their tumblers and 
I like helping people, so it's worth the inconvenience. Okay, and now that those are back together, these caps will actually go back on, which is kind of nice. I was, uh, when I first thought about doing this job, I was afraid those holes or those, uh, yeah, the screw holes would be bored out. But they remain, so the caps can go back on and keep things guiding a little bit better. All right, caps are on. That was the easy part. Now the motor. That's a whole different animal. The motor is kind of a pain in the rear to put back on these things. Uh, I found it's easiest to start with the bottom. So you'll want to flip the unit over. And there's a... Remember that ground plug? That's got to get in there. And then... Let's see, this was the bottom. So... Oh! Earthquake! Okay. So... I suppose that's not funny for some places you're from. Uh, let's see. And there is a step in this. In the... Uh, Let's see, I'll start with the other one so I can get that. And this is going to go through that center hole. So you want to get the plate lined up, you want to get this lined up, go through that uh, middle hole, it goes into that hole, and, the, and then of course you also want to make sure that the notch in that, uh, let me try to grab this motor here, try to lift the unit, yeah, make sure that notch there is pointed towards the... Um, the nut. Push all that through. Get the ground on there. And then you grab the little nuts slash washer thing they got here. I'm pretty sure that's the technical term for it. <laughs> Alright. Everything's lined back up again. The screws are through. I'll tighten that one a little more so you can see that it's through the nut thing. There it is. Okay, no sense in uh, tightening them up yet because the whole motor is going to have to be slid left right. So I'll repeat the process with the other ones. Uh, through. Again, small hole. Make sure the uh, little tab is pointed towards that nut. Come on, be nice. washer thing two in one nut that's what it is yeah that's the technical term for it oops sorry bumping the camera okay uh, uh, if you watch my previous video I've already said this before but I like to, this is all set up so you, this is set up so that you can adjust uh, the belt distance if you want. Um, I've never seen an advantage to that. Uh, I've tried. Uh, I've certainly tried adjusting the motor to adjust the belt length and tighten it up or loosen it, but uh, I think all I've ever done is just uh, put stress on the motor. So I like to leave the motor right where it's at. Uh, right where I was manufactured and because uh, I think if you get the belt too tight what happens is it pulls this a little bit sideways and it puts extra heat on the motor and it causes it to uh, uh, wear out a little faster so so these two units I've never adjusted I've never bothered with them I've never tried to uh, change the belt length or anything or belt distance or pulley distance from each other I guess however you want to put it and uh, these two have been running like I said just fine they're still on their original belt as far as I can remember I don't think I've ever replaced the belt if I had I would have probably put the poly belt on I prefer those poly belt make sure when you're putting this on that the screw is towards the motor and that the flat side of the shaft is up Not a whole lot of room in there to work. And if I remember right, usually there's a, just a little bit of shaft exposed. 
I know some people will uh, recommend uh, just leaving the screw a little loose and then starting up the motor with the belt on and letting the itself guide itself into position. But uh, I just do it this way. And, oh, I'm gonna come out a little more. It doesn't look like it's quite lined up with the motor. That looks lined up. Okay, now to get the belt on there. Sneak it in. There we go. All right, time to plug it back in. Hit the on switch. And... Hmm. Looks like it's got a wobble in there, like I didn't get the... Uh, fully quite straight mm -hmm. so let's see if I can fix that oh it's because this set no the set screw did not come loose that looks a little better a little better okay of course seeing that screw flying around is Kind of throwing me off a little bit too. But there you go. It's all. Well, not quite done, I suppose. Got to get the covers on. And there are other ways I modify these, of course. Uh, I th I've already had a video out of how I modded these. Um, but uh, I get these little shower door rollers. I think I have a set of them sitting here. These are. Yeah, yeah. Take these little shower door rollers and uh, I just put them on here in place of that screw and just let them uh, spin on there. So, not gonna get to that tonight. I'm out of time. I gotta get this, uh, I gotta get on to other things, but uh, that is definitely gonna be on a list of things to do very soon, of course. Right after I finish putting this heat shield on. together oh and uh if you are interested in this shower door roller or whatever i'll probably make that a friday's rock when i do that uh, just so you guys can see it it's a three quarter inch l bracket with a shower door roller and uh yeah or maybe it's a screen door roller maybe they're universal let me find the barrels here where did i sit down here right? there we go oh got a squeak yet Only when the barrel starts rubbing. So, maybe it's time to replace the belt. Nice and smooth until you get some friction there. Yeah, that one's alright. Alright, well, back together. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope this helped you a lot. Um, hit the like if you got any, uh, if it helped you or if you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, uh, I have more projects coming up always, and uh, I know uh, I know the DIY side of my channel is the fastest growing part of the channel, and which is what I love. I, I love being able to help. So if you have any uh, questions or comments or things you'd like to see, let me know down below, and uh, I'll try to get to it in the future videos. And uh, until then, thanks, and uh, I'm gonna go wash my hands, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.